WCIA 3 News at 6.30. I thought, oh my God, if I'm going through this, think of all the other people. His patient says a nursing home kept her against her family's wishes and they were not keeping up with the care she needed to heal. She says Champaign-Urbana Nursing and Rehab in Savoy held her past several planned release dates while profiting off of a treatment plan they weren't properly providing. Our Target 3 investigative reporter Renee Cooper is with us now. Renee, a lawyer for the facility disputes all of this. He does, Jennifer. An attorney for CUNR or Champaign Urbana Nursing and uh, Rehab says notes from doctors and an external nurse practitioner would show Lori Dixon was not kept any longer than was medically necessary. Now, she is home from the nursing home now that you can see uh, something the attorney says the doctor was still reluctant to agree to. Now, Dixon's family says they struggled to get clear communication for more than a month of trying to bring her home, all as the clock was running out on the time her insurance would help cover the cost of that stay. Lori Dixon is in the final stage of multiple sclerosis. She's able to use her right arm. She's completely of sound mind, but um, much of the rest of her body is paralyzed, and so she needs some care. Lisa Dixon is Lori's sister-in-law and power of attorney, able to make health care decisions on Lori's behalf. In early April, Lori fell deathly ill. Basically, she was septic and had some sores, and she had a bladder infection, and uh, all, many infections. After about three weeks in the hospital, she was transferred to rehab at Champaign-Urbana Nursing and Rehab, or CUNR. The saga really started there. <laughs> A critical part of Lori's treatment plan at CUNR was having the dressing on her wounds changed twice a day to ensure they didn't get reinfected. Very often it happened once a day or over the weekends, very often it would not happen at all because they were short, constantly short-staffed. Medicare.gov gives CUNR a one-star rating overall and for staffing. Nurses at CUNR are responsible for about 30 more patients per day than both the national and state averages. Lori's just telling the story that she turned her call light on on a Friday afternoon and that call light did not get answered until Saturday afternoon. By early July, Lisa began trying to get Lori released to home care. She got insurance approval, knowing Lori's 100 allotted days of Medicare coverage expired at the end of the month. Lisa says the CUNR social worker then said she needed doctor approval. We would try and set up a time to see the doctor. Oh, well, he makes his rounds on Wednesday. Show up on Wednesday at 8 a.m. and wait. Oh, well, no, he doesn't come until the weekend. Finally, the release date was set, July 19th. But when the day came, Lisa was told the home care equipment wasn't ready. The 19th became the 31st, and the final day the nursing home would receive Medicare payments. So I did begin to feel that they were trying to keep her uh, because of the money. Then July 31st came and went, and the cost of her stay became her sole responsibility. Nobody was ever really concerned about the pain I was in or the tears that I shed, you know, or the help I needed. And on August 19th, a month and a half from the first try, Lisa took her sister-in-law home. I don't know what I'd do without that. Really, I'd be there. I would have never gotten out. Now, CNR's attorney refuted any assertion that the company was motivated to keep Lori for the money. He said the primary reason for not releasing Lori in July was her medical condition. I brought up the cost concerns and the fact that the family was wanting to set up total care just at home. Now, he acknowledged the expense associated, but reasserted that it just wasn't an option, according to staff. Back to you. All right, Renee, thank you. We're